Copium is the only word that I can use for what I've just witnessed in Jujutsu Kaisen. There is a lot of things that has happened within this media that has been shocking, that has been impressive, that has been very amazing to watch. But one thing I will say is that nothing would have prepared you for what would have really happened at the end of this Gojo vs Sukuna fight. And you guys know me. If you look at my other videos, you'll see that I'm quite more energetic and putting a lot of emphasis in what I say and trying to make sure that you guys are really engaged but you can tell today is a bit different the way it's tough man it feels bad man it feels bad but i was saying to people before if the story was going to progress this is the only way and a lot of people said i was lying and i was wrong but you can see what happened in the end but what makes this one of the saddest chapters of Jujutsu kaisen let's come and find out so we're just going to analyze and break down everything that happens so the chapter begins with gojo and ghetto seeing each other and in the process you think in your head okay that that means that Gojo, for some reason, is having a little bit of a flashback. Little do you know, when they are talking, they are speaking in the past tense as if he's already fought Sukuna and the match has already ended. But then if that was the case, why is he looking like his younger self with Ghetto and why is he speaking in past tense about Sukuna? Then you come to realize that Ghetto is dead and it seems Gojo is also speaking with him. So you can only assume one thing. But that didn't matter because Gojo was saying as a Jujutsu sorcerer you end up dying alone and Ghetto actually responds saying who cares if what you're saying to your students was right or wrong in this case. I think we could all agree Gojo has been wrong quite a lot of times when we've been watching Jujutsu Kaisen and yeah man it's definitely not easy to grasp. So Gojo then explains that it matters to him and it's because of his father and then he cuts off and didn't continue saying that it's fine because Shoko will take care of it in the end. Now, I am very interested to see what about Gojo's father is he hiding? Why do we not know anything about Gojo's father? And why was it mentioned when he was in his deathbed? What, was something happened to his father where he felt like the father was alone when he died? Or was it the latter? I believe something along the lines of Gojo maybe being saved by his father as he was a kid because obviously at the age of 5 is when your technique gets manifested so maybe his father came in the way and actually saved them in the process. We've never heard anything about his parents or his family so I'm surprised that this is even the route they took. Afterwards, Ghetto was shocked and thought to Gojo, how was the King of Curses? How was the fight? Did he believe he was strong? Did he believe he was stronger than him? And <laughs> Gojo agreed saying Sukuna is really strong. And Gojo went all out. He did everything in his power. He trained, he gave it his all, but it still wasn't enough. He was quite disappointed that he couldn't give Sukuna a harder time. He believes that Sukuna had a lot to give and didn't even use all of his power. And Gojo was even doubting that he could win against him even if he didn't have Megumi. Now this is the part that confuses me quite a bit. Why on earth did he mention that? I believe Gege saw kind of the trolls that people were doing saying that Sukuna is a fraud and stuff like that. So he had to make Gojo sound like, oh, even without Megumi, he would still be in me because genuinely I don't believe that would have been the case. I genuinely believe how would he have got through infinity if that was the case. There was no way he could have went through infinity because even later in the chapter, Sukuna says it himself, he tried to find a way to cut the world itself and he, without Maharaga, he wouldn't have been able to do it. So I'm not sure entirely how that was going to be the case, but I believe it's just for plot convenience for sure. So moving onwards, you can see that Gojo wished that Geta was there to motivate him. So when he, he fought Sukuna, everyone pat him in the back, he wanted Geta to also do the same. Then we see Nanami, so now you can really tell, okay, Gojo might actually be gone. Even telling Geta that, yeah, once upon a time, he wanted to leave everything in Gojo's hands. Because unlike the others, Gojo doesn't take the Jujutsu job seriously. In fact, he satisfies himself with Jujutsu so then he can have pleasure, not to save or protect anyone. I mean, from time you see what happened to Riko Amanai in terms of how high he felt and he felt like he was just a goal, he genuinely didn't do anything because he wanted to protect or save at that point. It's genuinely because he just felt high of his own power. And with that being the case, you can see that Nanami also in his head was like, yo, Mei Mei kind of told us something about when you're about to die, is either you choose North to basically see what you really are as a person or south if you want to remain the same and Nanami chose south because he wanted to remain the same and not change who he was. In that case Habara came through and basically told him not to curse Yuji and that could have been a blessing in of itself 
So what happens now is that Gojo is saying farewell to everyone. We see a feature from someone that looks like Toji in the background. We also see a feature from Riko and Kuro. I didn't know Kuro was dead so it's kind of interesting that they showed us that she died. And then afterwards, you see the scene change back as they're fighting and Gojo is bleeding to death. You can see that his whole torso is literally ripped apart. And for me, when I saw this, I was like, there's no way it is definitely Gojova. Now, I was a bit confused as well because I was like, damn, they really off screen Gojo like that? I was really confused. I was wondering, there's no way. But the fact they took this route is understandable. So, moving forward, I was wondering, how did this happen? And why did he leave so much responsibility to Shoko? Is it something we don't know that he's gonna do? And on top of that, I actually fear the worst thing that could happen is if Kenjaku takes over Gojo's body. So whatever happens next, the first priority should be to dispose the body of Gojo. Because imagine Kenjaku gets Gojo's body, there's no way Jujutsu Kaiser will be able to run. But moving forward, as I said, Gojo looked like he's out and I needed answers. So Sukuna begins explaining how Maharaga adaptation ability worked and when he was doing so, Maharaga pretty much was adapting to infinity. In the process of doing so, it's gradual and it progressively begins to adapt more and more. As you get hit more with the ability or you try and get through the ability, it pretty much quickens the process of how fast it can adapt. So when Maharaga slashed off his arm, it was changing his curse energy to be able to adapt to Gojo's infinity. But Sukuna was not able to actually change his curse energy to adapt to Gojo's infinity. So he was looking for the next best thing, the next blueprint that would allow him to get through this infinity with no problem with ease. And in the process of doing so, he able to find something that was able to cut through the world, not infinity itself. So the reason that it worked is because infinity is only a finite space in the 3D plane. And when you really deep it, Sukuna pretty much hit him with like a yummy dimension slash to the point where it was able to go through the infinity within that confined space. So anything that was within that world, if anything within that world could be cut, Sukuna would be able to cut that world including cutting infinity because it's of the world so yeah um that's pretty much why sukuna was able to adapt and target gojo cutting him off completely so if you had infinity or not the world pretty much could be cut by anything that sukuna throws at it this chapter was then acknowledged by sukuna saying you know what gojo good job and he will never forget about him that was gojo's death and if we're being honest hajime kashimo rushes into the fight and i'm excited for that one but before we carry on with that sukuna acknowledging his opponents after the fight is something that he does a lot if they're a bit of a challenge jogo was the first one he did with saying stand proud but in this moment you can see sukuna tried to do it with gojo and he said he would never ever forget him that is something that i believe might be insinuating that he was the best fight he's ever had i'm not 100 sure but definitely it damn near might be the best fight he's ever had and it can't end there sukuna is going to be fighting again and again and this is like the cell games where everyone was watching on the tv and was able to watch it from the sidelines and now going in one by one is definitely the cell games for sure and there's obviously going to be cell juniors or someone stopping the others from interrupting like the cell games as well and kenjaku is in the back planning there's just so much that is happening and really and truly this hurt me but I get it and I understand it. Gojo, you are a goat, never forget that. Anyway that will conclude the video, if you haven't already make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you're new and as I say to the new no people that come and visit my channel, Njana.